Good morning. I think we're just about to go live. Good morning again. In the name of the God who can open our hearts and guide our minds, welcome to First Presbyterian Church of Rockwall, Texas. Um, we wanted to remind you that today is Helping Hands Sunday, and the offering uh, envelopes for Helping Hands uh, should be in the pews. You may have to look around a little bit, but they should be out there. It's also birthday Sunday, so happy birthday to everyone who has a birthday in September. We're not doing the after service cake yet um, due to COVID concerns, but um, happy birthday. And all the names of the people who have birthdays in September are printed on the back of your bulletin. Andy Kirk has an announcement. Talk very loud. Thank you, Andy. Any other announcements? Let us pray. God of grace, you have given us minds to know you, hearts to love you, and voices to sing your praise. Fill us with your spirit that we may celebrate your glory and worship you in spirit and in truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen.
Please stand if you're able. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the, the Lord's, Lord's name is great among all the nations. Live in a way that is worthy of the gospel. Stand firm in the spirit, side by side. Please remain standing. Remember that our Lord Jesus can sympathize with us in our weakness, since in every respect he was tempted as we are, yet without sin. Let us then with boldness approach the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. With the confidence of children of God, let us humbly confess our sin. O oh Lord our God, you call us to proclaim the gospel, but we remain silent in the presence of evil. You call us to be reconciled to you and one another, but we are content to live in separation. You call us to seek the good of all, but we fail to resist the powers of oppression. You call us to fight pretensions and injustice, but we sit idly by while the lives of people far and near are in danger. Forgive us, O Lord. Reconcile us to you of your spirit and give us the will and the courage to be reconciled to others. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Savior, as we continue our confession in silence. Hear the good news. Our righteousness is found in Christ alone, a gift of God by faith. 
Beloved people of God, believe the good news. Through Jesus, through the grace of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. God has forgiven us in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of Christ be with you and, and also, also with you. you. Please share the peace with those seated immediately around you. And after passing the peace, we'll ask the children to come forward for the uh, time for children. Y'all want to come up here and sit with me? Or we can sit down. How y'all doing this morning? Yeah, that's good. You know, there's a little song that I used to know, and I bet some of these people out here uh, know it too. And it, uh, it goes like this. If you're happy and you know it, say amen. Amen. Can y'all follow me with that? If you're happy and we know it, say amen, amen. If you're happy and you know it, then your life will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, say amen, amen. Second verse. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your life will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. Now. To stomp your feet, it's going to, y'all are going to have to get it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, then your life will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. Okay, now the last verse. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Amen. If you're happy and you know it, then your life will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. Amen. Okay, now you can be, now you can uh, sit down. Just, uh, just, oh yeah. Well, Dan is always he he's always ready to help us whenever whenever we need help. Now, that song says that if you're happy. Whatever you feel on the inside is going to come out on the outside. So if you feel happy inside, you're going to be happy outside. If you're sad inside, you're going to be sad outside. And people can kind of see where you are. Well, you know, it works like that. We're going to read a verse from the Bible in a minute from a guy named James wrote the book. And it says, come near to God and God will come near to you. What that means is that if we take God, and, and, and we know God through Jesus, right? If we take Jesus into our heart, then, uh, then it's going to show. Because 
If we take Jesus in our heart, if we love Jesus, then it means that we are going to love other people. We're going to be kind. We're going to be easy to get along. I know that y'all are never not hard, not easy to get along with, but it, you're really easy. Well, I'm glad. And I know that your and I know that your parents just rejoice in that every day. But that's the thing that Jesus said that if you love me, you'll do what I tell you to do. And so if you draw near to God, he'll draw to you. If you've got Jesus on the inside, then, the, then your life will surely show it, like the song says. And if you've got it on the inside, that people are going to see it on the outside. So remember that this week. Let's pray. And we pray after me. And y'all can join in too. Dear God, thank you for coming to me. Thank you for changing what's inside of me. May other people see you in me. All through the week. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Okay, y'all can go to Godly Play now. If you... There, oh. Well... Well, you are mature. Well, I just, uh, I hope, well, okay, they'll go to godly play, then you'll hang out back here with your mom. Okay. <laughs> oh. oh, okay. Or they can all go to godly play. We play, just y'all work that out back there. Dan's got into the spirit, though. <laughs>
Let us pray. Lord God, our hearts are open, our minds are open, open our hearts and minds even more and speak to us by your spirit so that we may understand how you can come into us so we may understand how you living in us can be observed by others who see us, hear us talk and see us live and associate with us from day to day. So we give the moments ahead into your gracious hands through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We're reading from the book of James. The book of James is an ethical book. It deals with very practical matters. In fact, some think that James is so ethical there's not enough theology in it. In fact, Martin Luther would have had it left out of the canon of the New Testament altogether. But um, I think the Holy Spirit had other ideas. So I've, we've got a passage we're going to read today. We're going to begin reading with James 3, verse 13 and read into uh, some of the fourth verse. And here are the words. Who is wise and understanding among you? Show by your good life and your works uh, that your works are done with gentleness, born of wisdom. And, but if you have bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not be boastful and false to the truth. Such wisdom does not come down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, devilish. For when there is envy and selfish ambition, there will also be disorder and wickedness of every kind. But the wisdom from above is first pure, then peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good works, without a trace of partiality or hypocrisy. And a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace for those who make peace. What causes fights and quarrels among you? Don't they come from your desires that battle within you? You desire, but you do not have, so you kill. You covet, but you cannot get what you want, so you quarrel and fight. You do not have because you do not ask God. When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. Submit yourselves then to God. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. Come near to God and he will come near to you. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. You used to see them on the freeways around the Metroplex. I mean that grouping of, of steel drums, of empty steel drums banded together. Sometimes they were set where there was a major fork in the road or there was a major off-ramp. Now, these empty steel drums were intended to protect both the occupants of the cars and the structure of the interchange. If someone was uh, inattentive or failed to make a timely choice of direction at the fork, which led to a crash, those empty steel drums would provide a cushion from the structure itself. I've often been impressed with the number of times that those steel drums were crumpled. Either someone didn't see the fork in the road or couldn't decide soon enough which fork to take. The crumpled steel drums told the story of a crash and that they probably did their work in saving a life. Well, I believe there is a lesson 
to be learned from those crumpled steel drums. Uh, we often meet people at two extremes. On the one hand, some are so pure, so rigid, so inflexible, my mind's made up, don't confuse me with the facts, often wrong but never in doubt. Or just as often we meet the waffler, uh, open-minded to a fault, so flexible that you never discern a firm uh, position or decision. You may never know who such people really are. They're sort of uh, human chameleons. Uh, what or who do you want me to be is what they ask the world. Politicians often have that reputation, often well-deserved, of being the sort of person. But these people, whoever they are, unless you're one of them, can just drive you crazy. Now, that's what James is referring to, that the Bible speaks of this kind of vacillating more than you may realize. I mean, uh, Joshua and uh, Elijah are examples of voices that lie, loud, loudly uh, counseled choose. Joshua's favorite a famous line, choose this day who you will serve, but for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The whole Old Testament, at least up to the Babylonian exile, records the failure of the nation of Israel to realize their potential because of their inability to decide who or what is God. And that same story plays out in individual lives, even your life and mine. Now, the epistle of James covers some of this matter of human will as it affects leading the church. Uh, clearly, if we think about the context, there were differing fervently held opinions among the church leaders. Uh, Lines were often drawn in the sand about what the Christian life is all about and how we are called to live it. All of that led to dissension in the church. And doesn't that sound rather familiar to us? You might say that in the early church there was evidence of crumpled steel drums in and around the church. Well, there's still today a struggle in the church about how to address many issues of belief and practice. They come to the surface at every national meeting of one denomination or another. These same kind of struggles and dissensions, by the way, they break out at the office, they break out at family gatherings. There are some dis disputes that are found in the world of politics or education or business or even personal relationships. The underlying issue is always determining what is virtue and how and where do you find it. So if we see crumpled steel drums in our lives, they may be in some areas. I'm going to lift up three, and they all start with the letter C. The first one is conduct. The New Testament says over and over, as we were just trying to say to the children, that outer conduct reveals the inner person. Wouldn't we all like to believe that there is an ideal person, maybe a superhero out there, or uh, an ideal family situation? Uh, television shows uh, have done well, at least in times past, of portraying an ideal family, or parent, or child, or friend. And then, when we have just looked at this idealized family, then we uh, see a special about the real story, uh, 
behind these past idealized family icons, such as uh, the Bradys. They'll be on sometime this afternoon. You can see how uh, family ought to be, though the Partridge family or the Taylors, which is home improvement uh, fame. They'll be on today, too. The Ingalls, a little house on the prairie. They're on almost every day. And we watch these things sometimes nostalgically because they present an idea of a family that maybe didn't quite exist. But when you look at the stories behind the scenes and the actors involved, you often hear a reality of uh, alcoholism, uh, drug abuse, egomania, and dysfunction. Now, lest our cynicism get too much of a hold on us, uh, we need to remember that there are many good people in real life. And by the way, it's in real life that we would do well to look for our heroes and our role models. Their conduct and actions really do reflect the inner person. And we are impressed at times even awed, and we point to them and we say with admiration, there is someone who has convictions. There's one caution, though, when you have convictions. They need to be careful of any unexamined uh, convictions. Uh, there is a story told in an old movie called Heaven Can Wait, uh, where a rookie guardian angel pulls a man out of his body just before a terrible accident is about to occur. Now the guardian angel did that with the best of intentions. He wanted to avoid unnecessary pain for his charge. And then in the story as it goes on on his way to heaven, the man protests that he isn't supposed to be there now. He is so insistent that the supervising angel asks the guardian angel to check for a second time. Well, the guardian angel is defensive, perturbed that his work is being questioned. And the supervisor then replies, the likelihood of someone being right is often directly proportional to the energy with which people are trying to prove him wrong. Uh, that principle sometimes comes out in the daily news. Uh, I remember seeing a story once concerning stomach ulcers. A traditional wisdom had been that over acidity in the stomach was the primary cause of stomach ulcers. Uh, the research of an obscure doctor produced a theory that the cause is really a bacterial infection. The most effective treatment for a bacterial infection would thereby, therefore be an antibiotics rather than just acid-lowering drugs. Well, the medical community was first incensed, and the doctor was ridiculed for his theory. But as time went on and research continued, that theory was proven to have some truth to it. The point is, that faulty opinions are sometimes promoted with steamroller tactics. The search for truth is lost in the struggle to uh, determine whose opinion will win. And James says that the wisdom exhibited by such behavior does not come from above. There's an old expression. Winning is not the most important thing. It is the only important thing. And we must admit that some of disputes about what God is like and what God wills from us is often descends to who wins the argument, which can sometimes result in extremes which go all the way to crucifixion or in position. I believe that James is telling us once again that we proclaim God's message and do God's work only in God's ways. The end does not 
always justify the means. And when the promotion of the kingdom of God is not accompanied by what our great ends of the church call the exhibition of the kingdom of God, then something is wrong. And James then goes on to list eight characteristics which reflects wisdom from above. He said that it is pure, that is unmixed with evil, it's peaceable, uh, not causing dissension and disorder, it is gentle, that is it respects the uh, feelings of others, it's willing to yield, not obstinate in holding one's own opinion. It's full of mercy to those who do wrong. It produces good fruits, which is attractive and productive conduct. It is without partiality, which emphasizes what is right, not who is right, and is without hypocrisy, aiming at moral truth. And then, James says that the end of righteousness is the peace that comes from those eight characteristics. In other words, the crumpled drums of conduct are seen when we can't decide who wins, whether it's going to be selfish ambition or God's spirit. So we got conduct. Let's move to a second one, cravings. What is the root of many of the crumpled steel drums that we experience in our own lives? Well, James puts it this way in chapter 4. You want something and you do not have it, so you commit murder. You covet something and cannot obtain it, so you engage in disputes and conflicts. Well, this has something to say about our national mindset. Ever once in a while that uh, we'll hear that when a famous actor dies, we will hear that reported in the news and then start the retrospectives on the life of that actor. Well, that was also true several years ago when John Ritter died in a sudden and untimely way. And one of the retrospectives was on the story behind the scenes of the Three's Company sitcom, which John Ritter is most associated with. Suzanne Summers, who played Chrissy, egged on by a greedy husband, decided that she was the star. And they couldn't do without the star. So they asked for the tripling of her salary in the middle of the season. At the same time, she started to be erratic in her uh, attendance and performance. The ABC network refused to be held up and they played hardball. They, Suzanne was worked out of the show and eventually wound up not working. And later, when ABC was to begin a new show, she asked for an audition, but she was not even considered because the ABC network executive said, we do learn from history. Some of us may be uh, appalled at the salaries that are paid sports figures. Of course, we're still willing to pay whatever the admission charge to the game may be that helps support those salaries. Think back to the baseball strikes of several years ago. Why do people make a career of baseball? Well, in theory, it's their love of the game. But the, we've been told that the goal of sports is to take individual excellence and add teamwork to equal a winning team. Those strikes represented a perversion of these goals, which kind of mirrored the national mindset. As James puts it, you want something or you covet something. Well, what is it that we really want? 
I have developed a, a maxim over the years about those who are unduly concerned about someone who always gets his or her own way. Misplaced uh, uh, frustration and anger is around the idea of the frustration being expressed, I'm not getting my way. Well, not getting what we want in one area is often cause of dissension or abuse in another, or so James seems to say. And when he goes on, you ask and do not receive because you ask wrongly in order to spend what you get on your own pleasures. I heard of one of those self-directed group Bible studies in which the subject was prayer. And the person speaking said, in effect, well, if you pray correctly, God will give you what you want. Well, there is some truth in that, but we must emphasize that word pray correctly. God's positive answers to prayer tend to reflect what we need, what works for the best, and what is more often broader than just me. For instance, Jesus said, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled. So we have the crumpled steel drums that show up in conduct and cravings. Here's the last one, companionship. Many of the crumpled steel drums in our lives come from the inability to choose companionship wisely. James put it this way, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Back in the days of my youth in the church that I grew up in, the, uh, we often sang a song using these words, Yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Each victory will help you, another uh, victory to win. Fight manfully onward, dark passion subdue. Look ever to Jesus. He will carry you through. Now, anyone who has ever struggled with addiction knows the wisdom of those words. Whether the addiction is chemical abuse or uh, overeating or gambling or overspending or just constantly battling to have your own way. The strategy that women are taught when confronted by a potential rapist is to yell, no! It seems to me using that same strategy will often deal with any perverse behavior. Just say no. Whoever yields to temptation has probably been keeping company with it for a long time. And the opposite is true. Seeking after companionship with God, recognizing that who is the creator and who is the creature, a thirst to be filled with God's spirit, that's what brings God's presence. The results are the fruits of the spirit in which James called the harvest of righteousness. So, to summarize, the crumpled steel drums in our life are often a result of indecision or waffling in conduct, in cravings, in companionship, and things get on a more even keel when our inner being is in order. One of the good friends that I made at uh, Texas Tech was someone that I thought I could never stand. Uh, he seemed to be a negative, sarcastic, caustic, volatile person, the time of person that you just avoid, or at least I do. I was walking on campus one evening, returning to the dormitory. A car pulled up near the curb and a friendly voice yelled, Hey, hop in, I'll give you a ride. 
well, the, the, the car was somewhat familiar. The face and the voice of the driver were familiar, both belonged to that nemesis that I was talking about. But tonight, his usual unpleasant attitude seemed unusually positive. His demeanor was gentle. His facial expression appeared to be relaxed. When I warily got in the car, I was struck by all of the books that were laying on the back seat of the car. Uh, he explained that uh, he had for a long time been in a dilemma about his college major. And he said, I have been in a major that I absolutely hate. And then he added, I think I've hated everybody. Well, today I made a decision. I'm going to study what I really want to. I've just been to the bookstore. I sold all my engineering books and I bought all these. And he, with his thumb, indicated the books on the back seat of the car. That night it was a changed man that let me out of the car. You see, he had quit running into those steel drums. He had made a decision inside and it showed in the peace that came on the outside. And I discovered a new friend that night. By the way, about two years later, the day came that I sold all of my engineering books. In telling this story, I'm not implying that all people would be happier if they would stop studying to be engineers. But I found my own peace when I made a decision to do what I felt that God was calling me to do, and for me, that was to enter the full-time Christian ministry. I've often wondered if my demeanor changed that much. Choose this day whom you will serve. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you and a harvest of righteousness is sown in peace. Thanks be to God. Our response is uh, a song which uh, is a prayer and says, Change my heart, O oh God. It's 695. Let us affirm our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. We come to a time where we call this offering ourselves because that's what we're doing. We're offering ourselves into God's service, whatever that service may look like or be shaped like. But one thing that we can all do, we can enable this ministry that both what we do individually and what we do together, and you do that through your regular gifts. So those who are assembled in the sanctuary here, the plate is at the door. You saw it coming in, you saw it going out. I encourage you to do more and look at it. And for those of you that are online, welcome to this uh, service and we encourage you. There is a screen up there that tells you about how you may have a part in this ministry through your gifts. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. So let us return to God the offerings of our life and the gifts of the earth. seated. If you've looked at the news and I just glanced to see what we needed to pray for, I just say that we need to pray for our nation, we need to pray for our world, but we remember the name, the words of the old spiritual, not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, that's standing in the need of prayer. So with all of the concerns that are a part of our lives, that are all of our concerns that are for, that for not only our own lives, but for others. Let's come to the Lord in prayer. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, eternal love, we come to you with thanks today for your revealing yourself through your creation, your works, through Christ our Savior, through the scripture that witnesses to who you are and what you want us to be, and through those who have lived and live among us as the embodiment of your love. We know that all good gifts come from you, and we pray that those we give back may be a worthy expression of our gratitude and devotion. We pray for a fresh anointing of your spirit today so that we as individuals or as part of your body, the church, may never be satisfied with only the form of religion, but continually reach for the substance of faith as we have seen it and known it in Jesus Christ. 
Lord, there's turmoil today all around us and in the world beyond us. We pray for many who have been and continue to be the victims of natural disaster, of chance happening, or of human sin and error. We continue to pray for the balm of your healing upon those whose lives have been shattered by storm or fire or pandemic. We pray for our nation. May your, the love you command as your revealed will for us be stronger than fear and anger. And as part of all humankind, may we show to the world the face of love. For those among us here in our knowledge who deal with physical or emotional pain, we pray for strength, healing, and peace that comes by the presence of your spirit, and that you give what is needed to accomplish your purposes in and through us. Grant that we as human beings learn the ways of wisdom, moderation, and tolerance. We created in your image would a true reflection be. As we remember those who have gone before us, whose lives reflected your character to us, we give thanks for those who have given us an image of the good that humanity can be and do. Send us out from this place to be ambassadors of peace and love and joy. And now as our lips go silent, hear the prayers of our hearts. Lord, trusting in your mercy, these and all our prayers we offer through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Closing hymn, 839, Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. And if Jesus is mine, the world's going to notice. Let's stand and sing it together.
And let us go out into the world to love and serve the Lord. And let what we have garnered inside, the God we've invited inside, come out in all that we think and say and do. And may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and the love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. And let all God's people say, Amen. Amen.